Well, good afternoon, everyone. Great to see all of you here. And I know that there's a lot of IR, industry roundtable recruiting going on today out there. Uh, my name is Meng Chang. I'm the John A. Everson Dean of College of Engineering. And tonight, we celebrate the accomplishments of five outstanding students who are seniors right now, and we'll be welcoming them on stage fairly soon. And tonight also, we deeply appreciate the visionary generosity from one of our most outstanding, distinguished alum uh, and his wife and their family. And this is a tradition we started, I think, two years ago before the pandemic, Three years ago, yes, time flies. Yeah. yeah, well, you have to pardon uh, my arithmetic by missing one year, uh, as we often do these days. Uh, and it is fantastic to be back in our tradition again today. So with that, I'm going to introduce the MC of uh, this evening's ceremony, my dear colleague Susie, who actually started this whole conversation back three plus years ago. Thank you, Susie, please. Thank you, Meng. It is my pleasure to emcee tonight's honor awards for the Purdue Engineering Fellows. Faculty and staff nominated students based on three criteria, critical thinking, problem solving, and good peer relations. A select committee looked closely at the nominations and came to tonight's five engineering fellows. Please welcome Matt Boyle to the stage. We'll have you come over here. Thank Congratulations. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Matthew is a first-generation college student studying industrial engineering from Greenfield, Indiana. On campus, he is the treasurer of the Purdue Engineering Student Council, a college engineering ambassador, and a member of sports analytics at Purdue. He is the founder of the Mental Health Committee within the Purdue Engineering Student Council and helped establish the well-being initiatives within the College of Engineering. Matthew's favorite thing about Purdue is the small community feeling in such a big school. He feels as though Boilermakers from faculty to students are willing to go out of their way to confirm that everyone is succeeding at Purdue. Post-graduation, Matthew hopes to work in either a supply chain or business analytics role. Please congratulate Matthew Hi everyone, I want to first begin by thanking both Bob and Joyce. I'm extremely honored to receive this award and I want you both to know that this is extremely life-changing, so thank you so much. Next to the College of Engineering and Ding Meng, I want to thank you for giving a first-generation college student like myself the opportunity of a lifetime to make a difference within this Purdue engineering community. I've had the great opportunity of working with so many great faculty members, and I'm extremely honored and thank all of them. And I want to give a special shout out to Professor Alina Alatsenko. Professor Alatsenko, thank you so much for investing as much into this well-being initiatives that me and my team were investing. It's extremely awesome to see the College of Engineering taking all of our ideas and actually implementing them to help make a difference with so many students. Next, to my colleagues and the different organizations I'm a part in, and specifically the Purdue Engineering Student Council. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to make a difference within the Purdue community through numerous different events, including IR, which is coming up tomorrow. Um, another special shout out needs to go to Lauren Heiss. Lauren, thank you so much for giving a freshman like me 
the opportunity to start this well-being project. It's extremely awesome to look back and see now how many students we've been able to make a difference with in the scope of this project, and I can promise you I couldn't have done this without your encouragement and belief in me. To my friends, thank you all so much for giving me an outlet to kick back, relax, and have a good laugh in between the tough classes and work that we have as Purdue engineers. And last but not least, to my family. The love and support you've shown me the last four years is extremely immense, and I cannot thank you enough for this. Mom, Dad, and Andrew, I want you all to know that this award is yours as much as it, as much as it is mine. I can promise you that without the three of you, I would not have been able to do this, and I really appreciate you guys so much for just being there for me these past four years through all the ups and downs. I love you guys so much. And finally, to finish off, as has been mentioned a couple of times, I've been working um, with different mental health initiatives, so I just want to end tonight by letting everyone know that's listening that it is okay to not be okay. To the Purdue students out there, take the opportunity and go and meet with CAPS. They have great people with great resources. And to the non-Purdue students out there, there are other great professionals and resources available to you that you can take advantage of. Don't be afraid to speak up and let someone know if you're struggling and need their help. I can promise you all that there is someone out there that is willing to listen to you and willing to help you, and I just encourage you to take that chance. Again, I would like to thank Bob and Joyce for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our next fellow is Andrea Gibson Duperry. Andrea is from Detroit, Michigan, and is majoring in industrial engineering with a minor in global engineering and a cornerstone certificate in management and organization. Since her freshman year, she has worked as a communications assistant for the Purdue Minority Engineering Program. She serves as an algebra seventh grade tutor and mentor for students here in Lafayette. She currently serves as the National Society of Black Engineers Purdue Chapter President. And on the regional level, she served as the Regional Engineering Diversity Chair. Andrea is a member and current president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and is a member of the Society of Women in Engineers where she has served as a mentor. Andrea's post-graduation plans are to work for a consulting firm and become a program project manager while obtaining her MBA and working towards becoming a CEO of a major corporation. Congratulations, Andrea. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. As you've heard, my name is Andrea Gibson Duperry, and I first would like to say I'm so grateful to Bob and Joyce for this amazing opportunity. I shared um, when I got the email initially, I cried a little bit because to know that the College of Engineering and the College of Industrial Engineering um, holds me to such a high standard, um, it makes me so happy. And my mom always tells me, to who much is given, much is expected. So I'm really going to carry this with me throughout life, and I can say I'm very proud um, to say that this money will go specifically towards paying off my college loans in full, so I'm very happy to say that. Um, in addition to that, I would like to say I, of course, greatly appreciate my mother for all of her support throughout my endeavors here at Purdue. She has been a guiding force with me throughout my entire life and here at Purdue specifically. I would like to thank all of the advisory team at the College of Industrial Engineering, specifically those that I worked with on the Vive Voce Committee, because I was able to specifically um, give insight onto the college student perspective through the College of Industrial Engineering, and I really have enjoyed that experience thus far. 
Overall, I would like to say I really have enjoyed my experience here at Purdue in the College of Engineering, and I appreciate how um, the sentiments before that specifically the college ends up finding a small community and you find a home here at Purdue. For me, that was through the Minority Engineering Program and I specifically would like to thank Miss Virginia Booth Walmack because she provided that outlet for us and me and many more students like me. And without that community, I don't know where I would, like, where I would be, so I'd like to also thank my friends who were here to support me and those um, throughout the Minority Engineering Program and Nesby who have supported me through my engineering career. So thank you all. Our next fellow is Cole Heald. Thank you. Congratulations. Cole is from Fortville, Indiana, and is pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering. During his time at Purdue, Cole has served the engineering student body as president of the Purdue Engineering Student Council and co-president of the Purdue Engineering Presidents Council. As the 2020 Industrial Roundtable Career Fair Director, Cole transitioned the nation's largest student career fair to a virtual format for the first time in its 40-year history. Cole has been a student ambassador for the College of Engineering, a Girl Scout troop mentor, through STEM Power and the design lead for the EPIX team. Upon graduation, Cole intends to pursue a career in an industry and continue exploring his passion for leadership. Congratulations, Cole. Uh, just a little advanced warning. My thanks will be a little shorter than others, um, as those of you who I hold near and dear to my heart and who have joined me on this journey, you know who you are. Um, beyond that, I'd like to first thank Bob and Joyce uh, for your gracious gift and generosity. Uh, this war award is coming at a time in my life where it will provide great financial stability, and I'm truly grateful. Um, I'd also like to take a moment to recognize my fellow students. While the five of us who are receiving this award tonight are involved in ma many different ways on campus, we are but a small subset of Purdue's outstanding engineering community, and I cannot overstate the pride and honor I take in being named a Purdue Engineering Fellow. Thank you. Our next fellow is Marcus Lanny. Marcus is from Arlington Heights, Illinois, and is pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering and minors in economics and intercultural communications, excuse me. During his time at Purdue, Marcus served as president of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, which under his leadership grew from 10 to 20 and is a program manager of five projects for EPIX. Marcus also created the Morning Minute LinkedIn video series where he has been sharing an idea of optimism in a minute long video for over 500 consecutive days. Marcus says his favorite thing about Purdue is all of the leadership opportunities available. Congratulations, Marcus.
Wow. Thank you all so much for this recognition and the award. But while you see some of us up here on stage today, it's about all the people that have helped us behind the scenes that this award really goes out to. So the first thank you goes to the College of Engineering for providing opportunities to so many engineers. And if you've been on campus recently, you know that I mean so many engineers. Next, to Bob and Joyce for not only the financial sponsorship, but letting Boilermakers know that there's a strong network out there and that you have smiling Purdue engineering faces out there for you to bounce off of, and they're gonna help you rise. Next, to my parents. Not only have they supported me through the years at Purdue, through my education, but since day one. Whether it was multiplication tables in the bathtub or coming with me to all of our Silver Dipper runs whenever they come to campus, their support has helped me actualize my potential and be able to create that impact on campus. Next thank you goes to all the faculty and friends that I've encountered through my time at Purdue and specifically through the mechanical engineering department. We've strived together to not only learn the material, but to apply it and see how not only can we use this material, but how can we learn how to learn better. And with that support, none of this could be possible. And finally, to my team at the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. When I first joined ASME, I went to our meeting where we were designing lacrosse sticks that we were going to donate to underprivileged youth in the West Lafayette area. And they said, all right, Marcus, go ahead and open up SolidWorks. And I said, OK, what's that? And they said, well, it's a CAD package. And I said, OK, what's that? And they gave me this look of like, you want to be an engineer, and you don't even know CAD. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, hold on, don't we do mechanical engineering because we don't know what engineering we want to do? <laughs> but after working with ASME and having the honor of serving as president from when we started a year ago with 10 members, which then grew to 75, and this semester we're proud to have over 200 members as a part of the organization. And the learning that we've taken away from ASME is way more than I've ever made in a minute-long video on LinkedIn. So to the College of Engineering, thank you. Not only supporting the five of us, but supporting so many engineering students who are going out there and making an impact in using their Purdue experiences and educations to positively change the world. To Bob and Joyce for the financial sponsorship. And I think right about now is a good time to answer the million dollar question. What am I doing with the money? And it starts last summer, where I was working a job, an internship, and taking a class. And it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong, but it was a lot. And I was dreaming. I was thinking, next summer, I'm working part-time, and if I have the funds, I'm going to travel. I want to go hiking, kayaking, whitewater rafting, meeting boilermakers from around the world. And thanks to Bob and Joyce, that dream just became a reality. To my parents, for their unwavering support from day one, and for helping me grow and actualize my potential as I became a Purdue engineer. To all the faculty and friends I've had the opportunity to meet and work with through mechanical engineering and beyond. And I hope we leave that door of help open because I have a heat and mass assignment due this week and I'm going to need help. And finally, to everyone in the American Society of Mechanical Engineers for teaching me more about leadership than I ever thought I could learn from a club organization. Thank you and boiler up. And our fifth Fellows of the Evening is Angie Zhang. Angie is from Palmdale, California, and is also a first-generation college student. She is ma majoring in aeronautical and astronautical engineering. On campus, she serves as a president of Society of Women and Engineers, is a tour guide for the Purdue Student Engineering Foundation, and an ambassador for the aeronautical and astronautical engineering department. Angie has conducted research on the supersonic commercial flight at Purdue's Systems of Systems Laboratory. 
After graduation, she aspires to be the forefront of developing new aerospace technology as a test engineer. Congratulations, Angie. Hi everyone, let me start off by saying that my voice is gone because I screamed a little bit too much when I found out I got fellows last week, <laughs> so please excuse that. <laughs> I want to thank everyone from, for coming out tonight. Um, like you had mentioned, I am a first generation college student um, and just getting into Purdue University was such a huge milestone for my family and I. I grew up working in my parents' restaurant and that's what I thought I was slated to do my whole entire life. And so being able to come here and study aerospace engineering was a dream of mine. Uh, my journey when I started here was nothing but difficulty and a lot of hardships. I actually ended my freshman year with a 2.8 GPA, and I'd failed to make it into the aerospace engineering major. This was one of the hardest experiences I had gone through because I dreamed of this my whole life. From there, it took a lot of perseverance, a lot of grit to keep going because I knew there was no going back from here. I reached out, asked for help. I built a support group. I joined the Society of Women Engineers, the Purdue Student Engineering Foundation, and surrounded myself with people that I supported and loved found my Aero Study group, and everyone that's also here in the audience today. Um, I made the most amazing friends through that. With that said, um, I am very shocked <laughs> to be here at this point. Um, I wanted to first thank Bob and Joyce for your generosity. Um, that seriously means the world to me. Um, second of all, I want to thank my parents, my mom and my dad, who flew out from LA this morning, as well as my sister. Um, to my study group, to all the friends, some who are here today. Thank you guys for everything that you guys have done for me. This award is your guys' award that we're all sharing. Um, I know we've gone through so many memories and I'm so blessed to be standing up here. So thank you guys for this amazing engineering honor. And closing remarks, we'll bring Dean Chang back up. Let me first take this off, if uh, you don't mind, so that I don't blow hot air right back at myself. I fog my glasses. Well, the warmest congratulations to all the five recipients, Matthew, Andrea, Co, Marcus, and Angie. Clearly, we are immensely proud of you. Not only of your brain, but also of your heart. And what you have been able to do here at Purdue reminded us why we have a land-grant university such as Purdue, and why we try to achieve that pinnacle of excellence at scale in the College of Engineering, and that why that American higher education remains a door that is open to all and is a uplifting force that can enable dreams of young men and women. So thank you so much, and I trust that you will continue your journeys onward, forward, bringing that baller pride with you, and wherever you go, continue to open doors for those that follow you. And this is the sixth or seventh time you're hearing this, but I have to say it one more time tonight. Thank you, Bob and Joyce, so much for your most visionary gift, not only as a reflection of the importance of our students at this institution, but also as a recognition that so many of them have done amazing work while they are here. And I want to share with you some thoughts about you, about American higher education, and about Purdue engineering. And this will not take more than three hours. Uh, I know that you don't have any homework or midterms coming up. Uh, well, about you first and foremost. It is about resilience, as some of you commented. It's about grit, it is about empathy and compassion during difficult times, and difficult times we do find ourselves in. 
But as you have seen, this campus safely and successfully reopened. And President Mitch Daniels said at the commencement this past May that perhaps the biggest risk of all is to take no risk at all. Please keep your masks on indoors. But yes, let's open the campus safely and open the door to all the students. And you have demonstrated what we can do together as a community during challenging times. You have shown that you can work together, even though you may have to take some courses online, even though some of the activities have to be restricted and curtailed, even though that uh, there is always the need of a plan B, but you have also shown that the thirst for knowledge, I was about to say thirst for midterms and final exams, but uh, that might be exaggerating a little bit, uh, but the joy of learning and knowing that, especially to those who are here at Purdue, that learning transforms our lives, the lives of our families. It means a lot to see how all of you have been able to pull this off. Because people, a lot of alumni ask me, Meng, we see many campuses trying to do the same. It didn't quite work in many places. So how did it happen? And I think that, well, there's something magical about that Boilermaker spirit, about the grit and the compassion, but also about the ability for us to be responsible, to be able to say to ourselves that, I am going to behave in ways that will be protective of this institution and those around me, and I'll still be able to carry on with my study. We're immensely, immensely proud of you. Now, American higher education is going through an awakening right now. A lot of my neighbors told me that, look, Meng, I know that Purdue froze tuition, but whether it is $10,000 a year or $53,000 a year, uh, that's too much for a video streaming service. Netflix charges a lot less. Uh, and indeed, we have to make sure that online learning is not just a video streaming service. We also have to answer to the calls of parents and students and employers. What is the value of residential learning? And what is the value of providing residential learning in a research-intensive university. There must be some unique value proposition that we bring to the table. And I figure that it's not about what we cover in classrooms and labs, but what we uncover together. By living in the dorm, by working with each other in the student clubs, on the sports teams, in performing art stages, it's about what we can uncover together. And it's not just about the GPA, but also about a passage of personal exploration and growth. That is the value of residential learning. And by connecting the world's top tier researchers who are inventing and creating the knowledge to also disseminate and teach the knowledge, you will be able to learn better otherwise. But we have to answer the question, what is online learning and what is residential learning's value? So here at Purdue and Purdue Engineering, thanks to the outstanding faculty and staff, some of them have to face tremendous challenges back home. They were able to innovate. For example, when it comes to online, they created educational digital twin in the Bacto Innovation Design Center, where you can design your makerspace, and then you can manipulate the experiment remotely, and then come in for the final step. They created virtual labs, so that laboratory experiences, both for those who cannot get the full bench time easily, and for those who have to learn remotely, will be able to virtually participate. And they invented different ways to use artificial intelligence so that big data through machine learning can help human learning. And then after all, if Netflix can predict our taste 
in movie choices so well, or not so well, depending on you know how uh, weird of a choice you have. But uh, why not bring that to virtual learning experience? Let AI help us learn more effectively with individualization, recommendation, and prediction based on how we learn each as a different individual. And when it comes to residential learning, I'm proud to say that many schools here, and I see some school heads here, I see some associate deans here, thank you so much for spearheading, even though you have a lot on your plate, two outstanding initiatives over the past month and years. One is the Agile Curriculum Reform. We have to make sure that what we teach, as well as how we teach it, in ways that are flexible and modularized, in ways that tie it to the reality, just in time and just, not just in case, how do we improve the pedagogy and the arrangement and configuration of the modules in our curricula in a way that reflect the technology's advance and societal needs, in a way that reflect the preparation of the latest generation who grew up often with electronic devices such as smartphones, frankly, not only growing up with them, but glued to them, uh, and reflect the ever-changing dynamics of teaching engineering as a problem-solving mindset. And this has happened in many schools. And across the whole college, the other initiative outside of classrooms and away from your transcript is the GRIT program. G-R-I-T, G for global experience. And yes, we still can have some of that virtually. We're confident that one day we can resume that in the full glory. R for research as an undergraduate, not only in summer through the SURF program, but throughout the academic year. I for industry, internship, and co-op program. And indeed, we are launching a new modality of co-op called learning while working where you can spend 12 months working full time while being allowed by your employer to take courses online and catch up. And T for team-based projects. There are hundreds of such student teams, including Formula SAE, for example, who recently this past summer, many of them from mechanical engineering, but also other schools, landed on number three spot out of dozens of countries global competition, and their best yet positioning in this annual competition. When we put G-R-I-T together, we offer the kind of experiential learning experiences that indeed truly only a residential learning community can provide. We will not rest, we're not content with the innovation we have because we know that our students and our faculty and staff and our outstanding alumni will not rest. We have to always make sure that Purdue College of Engineering remain at the spearhead of innovating pedagogy and technology. Because after all, higher education is the place for idealism. The pursuit of the infinite with what is merely finite. We are immensely proud of all of you, the five fellows tonight, and in this annual tradition, we are proud of all of your outstanding efforts. Boiler up, and I think that we're going to keep winning also this season. Uh, but uh, more important, perhaps, than the scores is the process. And tonight, we again go through this process of recognizing five of our most outstanding students knowing that there are many more out there, knowing that they will do amazing things with the Purdue engineering education. Thank you so much tonight. Will the five fellows please come up to the stage for pictures? We need a group picture. And I believe afterwards then there's some light refreshment outside. Yes. And then when we get done with pictures, the rest of you can go outside. We have a reception.
um, that is around on the west side in the atrium. So please join us in congratulating the five fellows in person. <laughs>